Hello. Hi. Um, I'm Francesca Allen. I'm a photographer. I graduated from London College of Communication in 2014. I live and work in London, and I'm represented by East Photographic, a photo agency. Today, I'm going to talk you through my personal work and uh, mainly focus on my first book, Aya. First off, I'm going to give a little overview of what I do and about my work. My work explores themes including female friendship, sexuality, and using the camera as a tool for intimacy. This project called Girls, Girls, Girls. I took these photographs around the time I was at university. The series comprises of around 100 images taken over the course of about five years. I think the first picture in this series, I was about 16 when I took it, and I think the last one I was probably around the age of 21. So it sort of spans over that whole time period of my life, which is quite strange to look back at. It was very natural for me to photograph what I knew, and it still is, hence why my focus is solely on women. I held such a fascination with my own life and that of my friends and documenting that. I feel like I was made to feel it was very frivolous to want to talk about what I knew and my world, but it became very clear that I wanted to tell the story of my own experiences that was really truly mine to tell. I could never make sense of why I was taking pictures, and I never felt validated until I read an essay collection called Girls, Girls, Girls by Catherine Grant and Laurie Waxman, which I fully recommend. Um, it <laughs> explores girlishness as not an age, but an allegorical state of mind, which is definitely something I feel resonates with me. Um, these are of my sister um, at two quite different times of her life, um, and she features very heavily in my work. The series went on to be exhibited at the Photographer's Gallery in 2014, which was a year after I graduated and was possibly the most exciting moment of my life. This uh, series, Hot Flush, was exhibited at KK Outlet last year. Casting plays such an integral role in my work, and often the girls featuring in the photos are close friends or people I've been photographing for years. Many of them appear again and again in various personal projects, editorial work, and sometimes even my commercial ventures, if I'm lucky. This project showed the girls in my work in a new light. There's a lack of vulnerability in them. I wanted everyone I photographed to feel sexy and powerful. The work explores a sexual awakening or a coming of age, and the women in the images are very much in control. When I wake my work, it's almost like a self-exploration of who I am, but also who I would like to be. I want my photos to express a sense of joy and freedom rather than the passive figure of the woman that we're so used to seeing. This is my most recent personal project and something I'm very proud of. Um, I won a project grant with British Journal of Photography um, earlier this year, and I was sent to California for 10 days to work on a brief that I'd submitted to them, which was um, an amazing opportunity to not be in London um, <laughs> and to be in some nice weather. Um, these are two twins, uh, Maribel and Maricela, who I found on Instagram um, by looking at a geotag for a high school. Um, and this is them in, um, in their house in Palm Springs just before they went to school one day. The project is called Women in California, and I photographed almost 60 subjects over the course of 10 days up and down the state, ranging from the age of five all the way up to 93. Um, these are two sisters I met in San Francisco, and this is actually the girl on the left's bedroom outside, which was um, quite incredible. As I was in such unfamiliar places, this was my first time working with a casting director on my personal projects. It was a collaboration between myself and Lucky Pettersson from Shane Nielsen Casting. Um, the people he brought along were amazing, and I feel like it really um, elevated the work. And it's been something I've been quite reluctant to... Um, sort of pass on to other people, and I'm so used to photographing people that I'm close to, so this was a nice opportunity for someone else to sort of push my work in a different direction. This project was so exciting for me, to be able to photograph such a diverse range of subjects in such incredible locations. These are two of my favorite pictures from the project. On the left, Pierce and Katie, a young couple from LA, and on the right, Audrey, Anidra, and Arma, three generations of amazing women. It's very important to me that a story becomes mine to tell, and I'm not just a spectator. There's so much more to taking a portrait than pressing the button. 
I spend most of my time with my subjects, talking to them and hanging out and sort of comparing anecdotes and stories. And actually, the moment of taking the picture becomes an afterthought, and it sort of happens in a very hurried manner at the end. It's actually almost not the part I enjoy the most, um, which I probably shouldn't. <laughs> The way I make my personal work, because of that, can be quite emotionally exhausting. I create and curate intimate moments with people I've just met, and I try and become a part of their lives, if only for a minute. This is Jordan with her daughter, Poppy, in Echo Park in Los Angeles. That brings me on to the project I'm going to run through in more depth. Earlier this year, I released my first book, Aya. It's published by a library man, a Swedish publisher, and it's an edition of 500 copies. We did book signings in uh, London, uh, New York, Paris, and Tokyo. The book is designed by Tony, who runs Library Man. It's cloth bound, and the title Aya is embossed on the back. Working on the creation of the actual book took around six months. We started working on it in February, and then released it in September. But I'd taken the pictures um, in... 2017 in the spring. The book is about the life of a young Japanese woman living in Tokyo. I spent just under a month with musician Aya Yanase, also known as Aya Gloomy. We were unable to speak the same language. The series documents a friendship using photography as the sole medium of communication. When you don't have a language in common, you communicate in a very different way. You end up using visual cues around you instead of talking about your past experiences. It becomes a very present relationship. Aya being young, one year younger than myself, we naturally grew very close and taking photos became almost secondary. We introduced each other to our friends, went to parties, and actually one of my favorite memories is being at Aya's flat in the suburbs of Tokyo and her grandma calling down at us from the balcony and throwing these like little cracker snacks down for us to catch off there. Um, I thought it was a very sweet moment of, between the two of them. These are the first photos I took of Aya. Um, I went to Tokyo in 2016 for a holiday with my friend Kosi, who is actually here tonight. I haven't seen her in a very long time, so I'm very happy to see her. Um, so we were there um, vacationing in Tokyo, and we met um, Aya. We spent a couple of hours with her taking pictures in the suburbs with one of her friends, and then we went to hang out at her record label. It was probably a total of about three hours that we spent together. I can't quite explain what drove me to go back, especially for such a long time. Something that my now agent Luke said really stuck with me. He said Aya was my perfect subject. I knew I wanted to make a book, and I thought, why not with Aya? One year later, I traveled back to Tokyo and embedded myself in her life. I'm gonna share a few behind the scenes uh, phone pictures with you. It's quite funny, about a week into taking pictures, um, we were hanging out with my friend Joseph, and Aya was asking him what I was doing in Tokyo and why I was taking so many pictures of her and seemed to be completely um, uh, ignorant to the book, as it apparently had all been lost in translation. Um, so I traveled all the way um, to spend a month there, and then... Um, that was a slight moment of panic, but luckily she was uh, very game and very happy to be <laughs> the sole subject of my book and my entire time for the month. Um, so I'm very happy that ended up working out. Um, this is a behind the scenes from uh, one of the studio shoots we did. I really love uh, playing with the balance of studio imagery and location. Sometimes photographs taken on location can feel a little bit hectic. There's so much going on in them. And for me, something about the quietness of uh, a photograph taken in the studio counteracts that perfectly, and it completely pulls your focus to the subject. There's nothing else to be looking at. This was one of my favorite days shooting. My friend snuck myself and Aya into his place of work, and we had this whole studio to ourselves. It felt ridiculous to be two tiny people in a studio large enough to drive a car in. This is one of the outtakes from the project. 
I love being in a huge studio with a white cove. There's something really magical about having that much space and something quite surreal about the pictures you take. There are no lines or edges or corners. There's nothing else identifiable in the image and you just sort of look like you're floating. Um, it's very important to me that taking pictures is enjoyable and fun um, for me and for other people, of course. And I think, um, I guess this, hopefully this video demonstrates that. When I decided to work on this project, I really had no idea what kind of book I wanted to make. I just knew I wanted to make something. I wasn't particularly selective at all about what I was photographing. I'm going to walk you through some of the pictures that didn't make it into the book, and they actually feel very, very different to the images that did. This is the first picture I took of Aya on this trip. She came to meet me before she had a gig in Shima Kitazawa, and this is her coming through the tube barriers and seeing me for the first time. The book could have had a much more documentary feel. I had so much content to work with that edit played such a huge part in shaping the visual narrative and aesthetic of the book. This is Aya dancing um, at a club night we would go to. I took so many photos and I could have made so many different types of books. It could have been purely candid snapshots or perhaps everything in chronological order, starting with that picture of her off the tube, or maybe only studio pictures. I worked very collaboratively with my publisher on this, although from quite early on, I knew what I wanted it to look like. I find it so impossible to do an edit of my own work, especially a project like this, which I hold so close and it's so personal. It's so hard to separate your memories of a beautiful moment and also what makes a good and interesting image for other people to look at, as they're two completely different things. There were so many moments I chose not to photograph. Sometimes I wish I could take pictures of them and be a different type of photographer, perhaps more voyeuristic, but I feel quite exploitative sometimes. It's very important for me to diffuse the power relationship between photographer and subject. I made a very conscious decision not to photograph Aya crying or to include any nudity. It wasn't my story to tell, and those moments are actually much more special kept between the two of you. And I wanted to show intimacy without using as a nudity, to tool, a nudity as a tool to do that. Worked into the layout, there are four handwritten notes from Aya. They're referencing the change of season and the arrival of sakura, cherry blossoms, in Japan, a flower that is symbolic of renewal. In the letters, Aya writes about the fleeting nature of spring and her fondness of the time spent together. The notes are not translated in the book. I was worried about losing the essence of Aya's colloquial language, but also to keep them as personal messages between friends. My hair became blue. I changed it with how I was feeling at the time. I was feeling that I wanted the opposite of Sakura. Blue is beautiful and fleeting. And now I'm going to show you some of the final pictures that ended up in the book. Um, on the left, we have a, a studio photo from that day. Um, and on the right is Aya in her bedroom. This is the cover image for the book. Incidentally, it's not my favorite picture. Um, quite far from it, actually. We'd used it as a placeholder in the layout. We tried to switch it out with so many different options, but nothing felt quite right. I toyed around with a lot of different title ideas, but nothing settled. Aya, like the cover image, was the placeholder we had, and again, it stuck. This is probably my favorite picture from the series. It feels like a perfect blend of old and new Japan as I experienced it, and it feels somewhat like a painting. I think this was the day that everything sort of clicked together for me. I really hope that the series tells the story of our friendship and the time we spent together. Perhaps a small snapshot of Aya's life at the time that for a moment I became a part of. Themes of friendship are something I hold very close. Speaking from my own experience, women create such, such special bonds together. There's not very much media around friendship and instead it tends to focus on romantic relationships. This was honestly one of the most incredible times of my entire life and exhausting. 
And I'm so fortunate to be allowed to enter someone's world in this way. For me, when you photograph someone, you're taking something from them. It's an inherently selfish act, and it was so important for me to get to know Aya for this project to feel collaborative. I see the position of a photographer as one of great, both great privilege and great responsibility. It's not necessarily important for me to tell the full truth, but rather the truthfulness of that moment that I played a small part in making. And to finish off, here is a photo of Aya with the book, seeing the book for the first time, um, which was uh, felt sort of like a full circle of the project. And then our book signing at Satoya Daikanyama in Tokyo um, last month. Um, thank you for coming, and thanks to It's Nice That for having me. <laughs>